As usual, Ali Velshi did an excellent job bringing into the fold subjects that most of the mainstream media refused to handle in detail as he did here. Of course, we're talking about inflation and whether the corporations are trying to gouge Americans. Ali Velshi didn't come out as hard on corporations as I would hope. I want you to listen to this piece and then let's take it on the other side because I have a lot to say about sort of the coddling that we give those who decided to take over our economic system. We have to rest assured a, a, a particular fact. This economic system does not belong to the few. It belongs to us all. We are the ones who make it function. Check this out and then we'll take it on the other side. According to Moody's Analytics, a typical U.S. household has spent about $445 more each month in 2022 because of inflation compared to last year. Now, on this show, we routinely delve into the various factors that drive inflation, the rise in the cost of raw materials and labor, the cost of energy to make things and the cost of transport to ship them, supply chain issues, even the war in Ukraine. But there's another factor that's often overlooked, corporate profits. When inflation is high, companies may raise their prices to pass the increased prices that they pay to consumers without cutting into their own profits. And that's understandable. But sometimes without us fully registering that they're doing it, companies take advantage of high inflation by using it as a cover to mark up products even higher than what would be necessary to recoup the higher costs. For example, during an investor call, the CEO of Kroger said, quote, we view a little bit of inflation as always good in our business. Let's look at AutoZone. It saw earnings jump 13% in the fourth quarter. And during an investor call earlier this year, its CFO referred to inflation as, quote, a little bit of our friend in terms of what we see in terms of retail pricing. Procter & Gamble it raised prices by 9% in its latest quarter. Why? Because it can. According to the CEO of Groundwork Collaborative, a group that tracks corporate earnings, P&G admitted its strategy of keeping prices high to boost profits on an investor call. In fact, corporate profits in the non-financial sector hit record highs this year following a two-quarter dip in 2020. Quarterly profits have surged over 80% ever since, not to mention the sheer number of high-profile mergers and acquisitions that we've seen in the past decades. In many sectors, consolidation of that magnitude means that companies have become so big that they no longer have to compete with one another, so there's no incentive to keep prices low. During a September hearing, Representative Raja Krishnamurthy, who serves as chair of the Economic and Consumer Policy Subcommittee, addressed inflation, saying in part, there are other factors that contribute to inflation that have not received enough attention. One of those factors is extreme price hikes. In other words, companies raising prices far more than required to offset higher costs, even when accounting for shifts in supply and demand, resulting in the highest profit margins we have ever seen in the last 70 years. A rare discussed factor that could, in fact, be a driver of the inflation that we're seeing today, or at least a part of it. Corporations charging more money for their products or services simply to increase their profits and bottom line under the cover of inflation. For more on this, I'm joined by Sheila Kolhatkar. If you're running a company right now, there are a lot of good excuses to raise prices. As you mentioned, costs of all sorts of materials have increased due to disruptions in the supply chain. We have a war going on in Ukraine. We're, we're still dealing with the effects of a pandemic. And then, of course, something happened that we've been waiting for for years, which is wages for average workers finally started to go up. So households have more money to spend. So the question then becomes, you know, why do they have to raise prices quite so much as they are? If they're really making 8% more money than they did last year, then obviously they've covered their own costs that have increased due to their own inflationary pressures. Then you have to look at the fact that, well, we live in a capitalist society and most corporations think that their only duty is to maximize returns for their shareholders. And corporations especially don't have a ton of credibility in the market right now. I mean, people have come to not trust them. And as you mentioned earlier, in fact, there have been so many huge mergers in so many areas that even before this inflation spike, a lot of companies were aggressively raising prices because they have almost monopolistic dominance in their yeah. particular market. I mean, for example, if you have been paying for internet service in your home for the last 10 years, uh, you have watched the prices just go up like crazy to the point where it's almost unaffordable for a lot of people. There are things that the government could do to try and address some of this, including trying to address some of the monopoly problems. But ultimately, 
uh, there isn't a whole lot that can be done to force these companies to stop behaving this way. Capitalists next, will do what capitalists will so do. Next. Listen to how I ended that piece that uh, where I cut that piece from what the, the woman had to say. She said, capitalists will always do what capitalists do. Right. That is absolutely true. And they will continue to do that until we, the actual owners of this economic system, the actual owners of our government, stop them from doing what they do. Because they will continue to do what they do if there's no backstop. They depend on us all for their success. They, they market our innovation. They market our work. They market our worth. Remember, executives do not innovate. I mean, one of the big factors that folks talk about leaving everything in the free market is under the pretext that if we take certain parts out of the market system, parts that really do not belong in the market system, that somehow innovation would fail. In other words, we wouldn't get as much innovation. The one fact that we forget to put out there is that the executives who command all the pay the shareholders who command all the profits, they are not the ones innovating. The ones that are innovating are the ones at the bottom of the scale who get a fixed amount of money for said innovation. The person who invent the microchip, the person who invents all the pieces in your cell phones, the person who invents new foods, the person who invents the 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 healthcare procedures, the person who invents all these pieces within our economy, most of them are working for a salary, a fixed cost. And then their innovation thereafter is marketed. Their innovation thereafter is profited on by executives and shareholders as they gouge us for that. In other words, they pay the innovator X amount of dollars they force the rest of the American people to pay whatever inflated costs for said innovation that they've already paid for, and they laugh themselves to the bank. That is the system. Don't allow anybody to make it less evil than it really is. And if we continue, if we continue to follow the path, we already have the answers of what that path leads to. It leads to income inequality, wealth disparity, and you name it. They continue to take a bigger slice of the pie because they can. And why can they? Because we let them. If an economic system does not work for all of us, if an economic system only works for a few of us, that economic system is a fraud. I will contend that the current state of our economic system indeed makes it a fraud. And how do we stop that? We make sure to elect those who would prevent them from taking us as bait. We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to, trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.